I love you. I love you so much. Let me see you one, two, strike. Nice, there we go. When you have a family, feeling that your future is financially secure means everything. All of our expenses are just really adding up. Mommy, mommy, can we get a cotton candy? Can we get popcorn? You know, we're going day by day, no real plan. Our daughter's just about to go to college in a couple years. My fear was not being able to retire. I'm Jacqueline Shattuck, a certified financial planner. I'm teaming up with advisors at Mutual of Omaha to do what we do best, helping families by designing a financial plan that fits their unique lifestyle. We're going to design a plan so your family can have financial security. It's great to have something that's so tailored for our family and our situation. We're giving real families a unique opportunity to have a team of advisors uncover strategies to help them achieve their financial goals. Maybe $2,000 a month, that could lead to about $2 million of retirement assets. It feels like a unique opportunity to have this team of people to put a plan together for us. Together, we'll empower these families to reach for their dreams one dollar at a time. This is My Money Planners. We are the Bridston family. Our family, we're just really close. We love having adventures together. Today, I'm meeting with Josh and Rose Bridston. They live in Corona, California with their two kids. Our kids, they're older now, and we're just in a new season of life. Okay, ooh, ooh, watch out. You got this curve here. There you go. Our daughter is learning to drive. And it's a little scary. Oh, you just ran a stop. Oh, shoot. And we're around the corner from college. Our daughter, Kaylee, is an honor student. She got straight A's. She really loves archery. She read Hunger Games. I think she wants to be a little Katniss Everdeen. And our son, Caleb, he is crazy about Legos. He loves math and science, and he loves building things. Josh and Rose don't have a plan to pay for college. Who's paying for school? <laughs> Am I paying for it, or are you guys paying for How it? How much is it? And at 48 and 49 years old, they're beginning to look toward retirement. I don't know what I'm going to do, because I don't have a retirement. We need some help, but for some reason with finances, I think there's a little fear of maybe being judged, and it's taken us longer to get to this place to ask for help. We'll figure out how to pull those financial levers and come up with a plan so that Josh and Rose can meet their financial goals. All right, you ready? Yeah. We've had some mishaps in the past where we've lost some money, so we're just kind of scared. We're gonna meet Jacqueline. We can't wait to see what kind of advice she's gonna offer to us. Hello, nice to meet you. To meet Let's you. have a seat. Thanks for coming Thanks so in today. Have you ever met with a financial advisor before? No. First time. First time. I'm nervous, I'll just say it, I'm nervous. Tell me a little bit about your current financial situation. We just paid off our house. Wow. It was definitely a huge financial goal. This is the letter we got, paid in full. <laughs> we just can't believe it, it was a dream come true. We're sitting there, you know, just kind of celebrating and then it was like, Okay, what now? We weren't sure what to do next. Right. The Bridstons have been paying $6,000 a month toward rapidly paying off their home. And now they're done. That's a lot of money they could put to work elsewhere. So what have you been doing now? So we have multiple savings accounts. We have about four CD accounts. A certificate of deposit, or CD, is a type of account that offers a higher interest rate than a regular savings account. The trade-off is that the money you put in a CD gets locked away for a set period of time, often between six months and five years. So these guys are expert savers, but they have nothing invested in the market. Have you had any experience investing in the markets? So no, I have some, some fears that stem from my upbringing. So growing up, my dad lost a lot of money, investing in this or that, not really knowing what he was doing, and it really affected my relationship with money. The bills weren't being paid. There wasn't food on the table. And I remember thinking like, as a young girl, I don't want to do that to my family. And I have my own fears with investing. Right after college, I decided to try day trading. I think it was about $8,000 that I had saved, lost it all. Because of our background, we both have hesitancy toward market-based investments. After some bad experiences with high-risk investments, they now see all market investments as too risky. But by avoiding even lower risk options, they're missing out on huge potential for growth. Do you feel like that money has been compounding pretty quickly since you paid off your home? No. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> so your CDs and savings accounts have been like watching paint dry? Yes. Yeah. 
We probably know about this much when it comes to investing, and we would love to expand that knowledge. That's another goal. Getting educated about investing. That's the first of our four goals. I'm brainstorming ideas with some of Mutual of Omaha's top advisors about how to address their investing fears. The Bridston family. They have $200,000 sitting in savings. Wow. The issue is that they're fearful of investing. Most people are fearful of the market because most people associate investing with playing the stocks. And this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about investing for the long run in a well-diversified portfolio. That's a really great point. Franklin understands Rose and Josh's fears. We can show them some of the basics, you know? There's a difference between an individual stock and mutual funds. We should show them the history of it and show them what it's done over time. Well, if we can get them on the right path, they can achieve a lot in those years. Agreed. With some market-based investments in mind, we turn our sights to the next goal, college planning. I need to learn a bit more from Rose and Josh. Have they mentioned any specific schools to you for college? I know there's been mention of UC Irvine. Well, if we could pay for it, I mean, that would just be, a, be like a dream for us. So they need around $43,000 per year in two years for their daughter, plus they need to pay for their son's education not long after. All in, we might be looking at more than $300,000 for their two kids. With college only two years away for their oldest child, that's right around the corner and not a whole lot of time for investing. For them, they have paid off this house, which gives them leverage. Now they have a great opportunity to fund an investment property. They buy a house for their son or daughter. She can move in, she can have two, three roommates. It pays for the house. It's a great alternative for room and board, but also I think we need to plan for the actual cost of college. I think they can use the 529 plan. What if we use the conservative investment option on a two-year time horizon inside the 529? They can do that too because they have the cash flow. So we should maybe do a 529 plan and we can start adding about $1,000 per child. So we're starting to form the basis of a strong financial plan. Now we have to tackle retirement. What's your ideas for retirement? I'm, you know, independent contractor, and so I don't have um, a retirement plan. You know, as a self-employed person, I just didn't know what options were out there. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just really need help. Josh, you're a teacher. You have a pension, maybe, that comes along with your job? Yeah, so I do have the pension. A pension is a retirement plan where your employer makes regular contributions during your employment. After you stop working, you'll receive a monthly income based on your years of service and salary. So they do offer like 403B. Uh, I haven't taken advantage of that because I don't understand enough about it. At 48 and 49, it might seem pretty late to start saving for retirement, but their $200,000 in savings could get them started right away. They also haven't saved for retirement. What should they do? So 80% of their pre-retirement income would be roughly about $160,000 a year that they're gonna need. For the Bridstons to maintain their current lifestyle, they'll want about 80% of their working income in retirement. Between Josh's pension and Rose's social security, they'll have the first 80,000 covered. So now we need another $80,000 worth of income. So as a team, we have to find another $80,000 a year for the Bridston. She can set up maybe a 401k through her company that could save her taxes mm -hmm. and help Good her point. save money. And I have a feeling saving and putting aside money into her new 401k will help give her the direction she's looking for. Josh has all those options at work. He's got the 403B and he's contributing nothing so far. You might have heard of a 401k and a 403B is similar. But it's primarily used for employees in the nonprofit world, like Josh, a teacher. With both types of accounts, you don't have to pay income taxes on the money you put in. Instead, you'll pay taxes on the money you take out later in retirement. Maybe $2,000 a month. That alone invested at 7% interest. That could lead to about $2 million of retirement assets in 20 years, which would generate that $80,000 that we're looking for. Wow. If the market grows at historical rates, it sounds like that could work. Now, no plan is complete without life insurance, so I want to learn more about the Bridston's legacy plans. I've heard you share a lot of really great things about your kids today. Have you considered life insurance for them at all? I'm the only one that has life insurance right now. $120,000 policy. So, Rose, you have no life insurance at all. I just want to make sure that we have a plan set in place 
in the event that something does happen. A good guideline is to have 10 to 20 times your income in life insurance. What would ever happen to our family structure if something were to happen to me? I thought about illnesses. My grandmother, she was in you know, nursing care. There were a lot of expenses that came in with the hospital bed. We want to make sure that later on in life, we have medical coverage for each other. Josh only has $120,000 of life insurance, and Rose has none. We can look into term policies for short-term needs. Okay. We can look into permanent policies. Yeah, maybe we looked at term until the kids leave the nest. And then look into permanent with long-term care hybrid maybe for after that. That long-term care hybrid might be perfect for Rose and Josh. But before we draw up their plan, I'm gonna see if the Bridstons have any other dreams. We would love to leave a home for each of our kids yeah. and an inheritance. That's a huge goal for us. It's about leaving that legacy for your kids and we, we wanna have something in place that they're gonna be well taken care of. Thank you both for being so open today. And we're gonna devise a financial plan for you and we'll be able to deliver that plan to you shortly. Sound good? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah. The advisors came up with so many great options for the Britsons. I'm so excited to share our plan with them. It's plan delivery day. All right. You ready? Yeah. We are ready. It's pretty special that you could have a group of people that would look at your life, come up with the best ideas. We are really excited to see what a specific plan would look like. The first part of the plan, education about investing. I want you guys to take a look at this chart here, okay? So 20 years is the time frame that you guys have in mind for retirement. We couldn't predict CD rates over the next 20 years, so I'm showing them how their $125,000 in CDs would have performed over the past 20 years. Historically, you would have only earned about $30,000. Wow. Okay. Now I'm showing them what it would have looked like if they had invested the same money in a 60-40 portfolio. That's a strategy that invests 60% of your money in stocks and 40% in bonds. So as we look at this chart here, you can still see the red line is the money that you had invested in the CDs. The blue line that you can see here is the money that you would have had if you had invested in a balanced 60-40 portfolio. Oh, okay. So if you had started 20 years ago, you would have over $400,000 more with your 60-40 portfolio than the CDs. It's kind of a no-brainer. You see that chart and the difference was just major. Yeah. It was kind of shocking. Yeah. I think I've helped the Bridstons understand the potential growth they've been missing out on by avoiding the stock market. But investing in the market doesn't come without risk. As you can see, we have times here like 2008 where the blue line is actually below the red line. So I don't know where I would be emotionally if a dip ever occurred. And I'm still hesitant because it is an emotional journey. It's your hard earned money. But I felt confident that she understood those fears. And so having a coach to guide you along the way, that made me feel a lot better. They now know more about the real risks of investing. And although they may still have some fears, they seem interested in trying. And this new openness toward investing gives us an important tool to grow their money when planning for their other goals. So now let's talk about children's college coming up soon. We want to make sure that we're not too risky with that investment because we have a higher probability for loss. And the team's recommendation for that is for you to look at the 529 funds. Are you familiar with those? No. So a 529 is a college savings account. A 529 plan is a tax-advantaged college savings account. Your money grows tax-free, and as long as you use the funds for college, you won't have to pay any taxes when you take it out. The money in a 529 can be invested in different ways, from riskier options like stocks to more conservative options like bonds and money market funds. If you prefer a more hands-off approach, you can choose an age-based 529 fund that automatically adjusts the risk level as college gets closer. So you can select a time horizon of investments that's in alignment with when your children are gonna go to college. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Okay. That's so we love the idea about the 529 plan. It sounds great for us because it's something that's a little bit more short term. For Kaylee, who's two years away, her 529 would focus on lower risk investments. Obviously, we don't want that invested in anything risky where we might lose the money. We, we need it. Well, Caleb's 529 at six years out would look for more growth potential. Now, the hard 
part of your job is going to be making that contribution to that account every month. I'm thinking that it makes sense for you to do about $1,000 for each child. Okay. We felt like it was something that we could do. Remember, without a home to pay off, they have $6,000 a month available to redeploy. And planning for college is a great place to put those funds to work. Next up, I want to give them our ideas for their retirement and their future. The team has come up with a plan for your retirement. You want to hear a little bit more about it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's start with you, Josh. Since you have a 403B available to you, we think you should start investing there. For you, Rose, we've seen that as an entrepreneur, you don't have that same kind of structure in place. Did you know that you had the opportunity to create your own solo 401k alongside your business? No, I didn't. You don't have to be an employee of a large corporation to have access to a 401k. Rose can start her own using her business. These plans offer the same tax benefits as employer-sponsored ones. You can put up to about $70,000 a year into this investment account. Wow, I was really pleasantly surprised by that. Our recommendation is that you each do $2,000 per month into your retirement accounts. $2,000 per month each is going to take a lot of discipline. For some motivation, I'd like to show them how that money could grow if the market follows historical trends. You'll see that at the end, you guys would end up with over a million dollars <laughs> in your investment accounts each. You would have about $80,000 a year in income at retirement from your investment accounts to be able to live on. Now let's add that to your other income sources. You're going to have about 50000 coming from your pension, and you're going to have another 30000 ish coming from Social Security. So that gives you guys an additional $80,000 of income. So now you're looking at about $160,000 of income at retirement should you follow this plan. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty exciting to see those numbers. We can travel. We could do all the things that are important to us. That, to me, is financial freedom. $2,000 each. That's our recommendation to make the rest of their available cash flow work toward their goals. Next, we move on to the team's ideas about future planning. I know leaving a legacy and protecting their children's financial future is so important to Rose and Josh. We met with the team and we talked a little bit more about your life insurance plan. Mm -hmm. We took a look at a hybrid policy for you. So a hybrid life insurance policy is one that can cover you either for life insurance or before you pass, should you need it for long-term care, you would be able to tap into the value of that policy. I never knew that there was a plan for life insurance and long-term care at the same time. I just never knew that it existed. As it stands right now, you have a little over $100,000 in life insurance coverage. Right. So, God forbid anything were to happen to you tomorrow, that doesn't even cover the cost of college. I've felt this for years that I didn't have enough insurance. So our goal is for you to have 10 times your current income. So we want you guys to have about $2 million of life insurance coverage to make sure that you can cover college, you can cover weddings down the line, that somebody can afford the property taxes at your home. Just hearing the ideas of, of upping that insurance to a couple million dollars just made me feel so much more safety and security for my family, for my kids. So there's a larger safety net is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Before we wrap up, I want to offer the Bridstons a little something extra. You want to hear about it? Sure. <laughs> okay. So you're planning for Kaylee to go to college. You could purchase a property close to where she's at school, somewhere that she can live in, right? So that you're not paying the cost of room and board to some other organization. And then you'll be building that equity in that home and you'll have something that you could gift to her down the line. What do you think about this plan? <laughs> I Did our that. eyes light up a little bit? We're like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Very yeah. much so. When she talked about it with us, I just know that, you know, we had smiles on yeah. our faces because this is something that we really gel with. We were like, wow, that's a great idea. Our goal today was not to tell you what to do with your money, but rather to show you the options and the opportunities that you have in front of you. All these options, there were pieces of our story in all of it. We felt like it was really tailor-made to our goals. And in every plan, things are going to change. We saw the blue line. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. And that's why it's really important that you have a team of professional advisors that you can call on because it's totally normal for us to feel fearful. And I think with having, you know, someone in our corner to pull that all together, 
it just wipes out the confusion. I can't wait to see you guys be successful on your financial journey. And I'm really excited. Thank you for your time and just explaining everything. Yeah. It helps so much. I'm glad I could be here. I can't wait to see how the Britson's plan can help them feel secure in their financial future. Having a plan now is pretty exciting. I feel like we have a sense of direction and it definitely brings our family a level of security. We were nervous about investing money, but it's been nice learning about the risks, learning about the different opportunities out there. Before, we really didn't have any plan in place. Now, having something in place brings a lot of peace of mind. Having a plan of retirement just gives us a goal to shoot for. And it feels like we're so much more prepared, more educated, and definitely more confident going forward. And I just feel like we're headed into a new season of adventure. Instead of dreading the future, yeah. it's like we're looking forward to, you know, meeting our goals in the future. It's so great to see the Britsons feeling more secure in their financial future. You can protect your family's financial future. Visit mymoneyplanners.tv to get started today. Thank you.